uh, Algebra 2, Lesson 76, um, and I said this in the geometry class as well, is that it kind of feels like when we get to this point in the school year that our book kind of doubles back on itself and starts kind of reviewing some older concepts. So this is actually kind of nice because it's factoring to a degree, right, which we just practiced a little bit with working on our SLO. So it might be a little bit different here or there. So finding polynomial roots, so this is what it's called, finding polynomial roots one, uh, which is on page 540 in your textbook. Uh, the polynomial zeros of a polynomial function are the values uh, x, you know, sub 1 to x sub n such that uh, f to the x, you know, sub i equals 0 where 1 is less than or equal to i and i is less than or equal to n uh, in terms of this setup, what we see right here, okay? The polynomial roots of a polynomial equation are the values of the variable that make the equation true. So whenever I plug something in for x and it comes out and equals what it's supposed to equal, those are my polynomial roots. Typically speaking, when we look at where these polynomials are graphed, it's going to be where it crosses the x-axis at. Okay, so where y equals 0. Does that make sense? Okay. So I think that first statement, the polynomial 0 statement, actually does more to complicate it than it does to clarify anything, and that's really the end of that. So what we're going to do from here is actually work out some problems, okay? And they're just going to be asking different types of questions. So on number one, it says, which choice is not a real zero of x minus 7? As, you know, and so what it has here listed, it has a listing a bunch of factors. So it's got x minus, or uh, we could rewrite that as y equals x minus 7 times x squared minus 2 minus x minus 7 times negative 9x minus 16, okay? So one of the things I want to do uh, with this is I want you to look at and notice this negative right here. What do I have to do with that negative with everything that's over here? I have to distribute that negative to all of those terms. So it's actually worth my time to go through here and rewrite this as x minus 7, you know, x squared minus 2 uh, plus, you know, negative x, negative x plus 7, and 9x plus 16, okay? So it says which, um, which choice is not a real zero of? And so at this point, what I need to do with this right-hand side well, actually, in either case, let me kind of backtrack here a little bit. Notice that x minus 7 is here on both sides, right? Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's think of a good way to explain this. Essentially, what we would have is notice because both of these, this x minus 7 exists on both sides, right? So 7 would be a real 0, right? Because if I plug in 7 here, then that means 7 has to go right there, correct? Yes? Okay. Which, that would make this 0, and 0 times that would make that 0, correct? Okay, and because it's the same thing over here, let's hit pause and pick this back up here in a second. All right, so picking it up. Um, so if I have, if I put 7 in either of those positions, it's going to cause the whole thing to equal 0, right? Okay, so, but because this is asking for which one of these is not a real 0, we're looking for an answer that does not work, that doesn't cause one of these to equal 0, okay? Um, and in fact, because of this negative, Right, let's say we had x minus, you know, we got x minus 7 equals 0, we add 7, so x equals 7, so 7 is a 0. Right, over here, if we distribute this negative, we said that we had, what, negative x plus 7 equals 0, right? So we would subtract 7 and then divide by negative 1, we'd get that 7 again, yes? Okay, which is kind of what we'd already have there. Um, let's look at another one here. 
Um, x squared minus 2 equals 0. What would I do there? Add 2. Okay, so we got x squared equals um, 2. Then we'd have to square root both sides, so we'd get x equals plus or negative square root of 2. Okay, and that's not necessarily one I have to worry about. Um, let's see. That's not up there anyway. What we're going to do with this, we're actually going to try something different. Let's pull out our graphing calculators if you've got it. Okay. And because it starts off as f of x, which is the same as y, we're going to do this. We're going to type in x minus 7, parentheses, x squared minus 2, minus x minus 7, times negative 9x minus 16. Okay, and instead of hitting, well, I mean, we can show a graph. You're going to see all the places where it crosses the x-axis, right? Right, and let's actually, let's zoom to fit and see if it shows me anything else here. Okay, so this is showing me the full kind of like drawn back version of it. Notice that it crosses at one, two, three places, right? And if I look, we're going to hit second table. Okay, so we're looking for places where, uh, let's see, where y equals 0 at. Notice that y equals 0 at negative 2. Okay, so is, zero, is negative 2 a real 0? Yes, okay. Um, let's go up and let's check out negative 7. Okay, that's close. Does negative is negative seven a real zero? Yeah. Okay. Let's check in on seven. Oh, well, seven's a zero, right? We've already eliminated that as an option, which means in terms of process of elimination, which one of these does not show up? A negative sixteen ninths. Okay. So that's my answer there. So you see how we can use graphing and check those x-intercepts to see where my real zeros are, and then how we can look into a table of values to see those as well. Yeah, for the most part. And then show me your table of values. Okay. All right, let's clear that out. Come down here. Question number two, find the zeros of the polynomial. Uh, 3x cubed plus 33x squared plus 84. All right, the easiest thing to do with this one is to factor out what we can factor out. What can I factor out of this? Anybody know? 3x. All right, so let's rewrite this after the 3x. All right, so that should leave me with what? x squared plus 11x um, plus what? What's 84 divided by 3? 28. Okay, and can we take x squared plus 11x plus 28 and factor that down? Okay, okay, we're still going to have a 3x out here. We've got xx, we should have plus plus, things that multiply to be 28 but add up to 11. How about 4 and 7? Yes? 4 and 7. Can anybody tell me what the zeros are going to be here? Negative 4, negative 7, and what? 0. Okay. Negative 4, negative 7, and 0. So do we see how we get D for an answer there? All right. So that was just factoring, and we've already done that. Okay. All right. And we've seen questions like number 3, the equation H equals negative uh, 4.9T squared. Okay gives all this information and we have to plug some things into that equation. Okay, uh, how long will it take it to hit the ground or h equals zero? 
Uh, let's see, so let's start off here. We want h to equal zero. So we've got negative 4.9 t squared where velocity, v is velocity. Do we, does it say in here what my velocity is? Initial, it should be the same as initial speed, I believe. Um, let's see. We've got 80 and 10. Suppose a rocket is shot from a 10 meter elevation. That should be my height at the end, right? So we should get plus 80 T plus 10. Is that correct? Hopefully. Okay. So let's see. What can we do with that? We need to solve that. Uh, let's see. What I'm going to do in here is I'm going to Again, get my graphing calculator out. Hit y equals. Okay. Negative four. Sorry. Negative four point nine x squared plus eighty x plus ten. Okay. All right, so let's zoom and let's get that to fit because I want to see where that hits on the other side. Still not really showing me. All right, so if you see where it crosses right here, that's the spot where it starts at. That's that zero, right? Okay, so we want to see where it hits on the other side. So let's check, sorry, second graph. Okay. Okay, so we were at zero at ten. Okay, and what they're not showing, you see how it's six between sixteen and seventeen? Okay, so it's between 16 and 17 seconds, right? Now, how can we solve this? How can I figure out what that is? Well, we've already learned this, right? We use, can we use the quadratic formula? Is that what you were thinking about? All right, so if we're going to use the quadratic formula here, we're going to use, what, negative 80 plus or minus the square root of 80 squared minus 4 times negative 4.9 times 10 divided by 2 times negative 4.9. Okay, and that's going to tell me exactly what my answer should be. Now, we could look at this and say, well, what's between 16 and 17? 16.45, right? Okay, uh, let's go ahead and try to solve this out a little bit if we can and see if we can't get there. Uh, I'm just going to put this on my calculator. 2 times negative 4.9 okay should come out to negative 9.8 and we if we have 80 squared 6204 is what you got inside here eighty squared minus four times negative 4.9 times 10. I got 6,596. Is that what you got? 6,596. So I'm going to see what the square root of that is to see if it comes out to 6596. And I get 81.2. So I get negative 80 plus or minus let's say 81.2 divided by negative 9.8 okay so quick question for you if I have to divide by a negative number and I know I want my time to be positive what kind of number do I want in the numerator do I want a positive or a negative okay so a positive divided by a negative is going to give me a positive so what do I want in the numerator I want a negative number. I know that seems counterintuitive. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to do negative 80 minus 
That's going to give me negative 161.2, and I'm going to divide that by negative 9.8. Okay, anybody get an answer? 16.45. Okay, does that make sense? We saw how it looks in a graph. We saw how it looks whenever we solve it. Okay, let's see if we can come down here. Four and five, and I'm thinking four and five are probably, I don't know if these are my last, yep, these are my last questions, right? Four, uh, find the roots of the polynomial function. I'm going to switch tactics over here and look at some of my better notes. Okay. Uh, it's pretty pretty similar. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see if there's a good example. If you really want a good example of, of seeing how to do question number one and question number four a little bit better, look at example number three in your book on page 541. Because you're going to see that x plus three shows up twice on both sides of that. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to keep the x plus three. So, we're going to, in this case, we're going to keep our x plus 4, okay? Okay, I'm going to hit pause on this thing. The recording on. Okay, so I think I can probably pull this out here. I'm going to erase this and show it again. That to move this down to this next one that we're going to see, we're going to take the term that shows up in both places, which in this case is this x plus 4. We're going to apply this negative to both of those terms. We're going to take this x squared. We're going to take that after the negative has been applied, so negative 5x. Then we're going to take our 8 and our 4, because that is now a negative 4, it's 8 plus negative 4, which is positive 4. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to factor this. So we've got x plus 4. We're going to break this into 2. x and x. So x minus 5x plus 4. That should be negative negative, correct? Okay. And what's that going to be? It should be what? 5 and 1? Am I wrong? 4 and 1. I'm sorry, 4 and 1. Negative 4, negative 1, right? So our roots then are negative 4, positive 4, positive 1. Okay? Let's try, let's see. I want to go back up to question number 1 just to show that again. Kind of see how that works. Uh, let's see, let's look through here. So if we were to redo this one under that same premise, we would get x minus 7, correct? And then we would get x squared. Okay, but we're going to apply that negative to both of those terms, correct? So we're going to take the opposite, which in this case is 9x, and then we're going to add these together. Okay? So negative 2 plus 16 is plus 14. And then you would factor that down. So what you're getting here is x and x plus 7 plus 2 and x minus 7, which is why we see 7, negative 7, and negative 2 as factors. Okay? And I think I've got two minutes, so let's see if I can get this last question in. Find the roots of this polynomial. What do what can we factor out of five? A two x, two x, leaving you with two x squared plus twenty five x plus thirty three. Okay, and for the rest of this you would use your quadratic formula to solve the rest of that. We know that one of our roots is going to be zero. 
uh, and the rest of it's going to come down to negative 3 halves and negative 11 in addition to zero after you've worked out the quadratic formula. Okay? All right. Your assignment, I think I cut it down. You it originally was A through G, 1 through 15. I cut it down to like 1 through 13. A through G. A through G. Okay, I'm going to hit stop. There.